In Washington Heights in New York City, there is a little staircase that leads to a hidden street that most people don't know about. It's very picturesque and it feels like you're walking back in time. It was even featured in the show Boardwalk Empire. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and let's explore the Morris Jamel Mansion Historic District here for this live video before we actually go inside the Morris Jamel Mansion, which is the oldest surviving mansion in all of Manhattan. We are right now in Washington Heights, which is uptown Manhattan, all the way in the very, very top along 163rd street stop on the sea line let me know where you're watching from and let's go explore a little hidden gem in this neighborhood so i'll show you on the map we're all the way in uptown and we're right over here this area so let's go Now this little staircase is unsuspecting, especially right next to a supermarket, a Seatown supermarket, and we have the subway just one block away. And you would not really expect seeing this in this type of neighborhood. Though Washington Heights does have a lot of historic secrets. This, every time I walk through, just utterly surprises me. So are you ready? Let's go and see what's above in the staircase. Press that like button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll bring it to more people who need them. So up the stairs, we're going to step back in time from the neighborhood that was featured in Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, Tony Award winning Broadway musical. To back to the 1880s. This is Sylvan Terrace. It is a trip back to the 1880s when this was originally built. Originally this street was a carriage pathway to the Morris Jamel Mansion right there at the end of the street which is the oldest surviving mansion in the entire island of Manhattan. One of the oldest houses in the entire city that we will be visiting at 1 p.m so stay tuned for the next video however let me show you sylvan terrace it doesn't seem like we're in new york anymore right mandy i agree hello wendy hello ronald hello everyone nice to see you here amanda you were just listening to the in the heights soundtrack yeah if you want to learn about the normal in the heights uh, you can listen to that amazing cast album. Great, great musical. One of my favorites. And we got some steam coming out from the apartment buildings. So it definitely feels like you're in a different world. Now these were originally also, before it became houses developed in the 1880s, these were quarters for the soldiers of George Washington. They used this pathway to build some makeshift quarters for the soldiers. Now these houses are worth a whole lot of money. Last price tag I saw on, um, on a few amazing blogs was $1.6 million. It's quite a hefty, hefty price. So let's go, let's check out 16 Sylvan Terrace. And I'll show you a little bit more of the windows. Look at how tiny the little doors are. Look at that. Like, this is a tiny door. This is a very tiny door. Hey, Susan, thank you so much for a $20 super chat. You say doctor appointment. I can't be on this afternoon. We'll watch later. Yes, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy the broadcast later. Thank you so much for the very generous $20 super chat. Look how tiny the door is. <laughs> Though the doors do get a little bit taller. I think these were just made because of the gradient of the, of the actual street. A horse and carriage needed to get on here because a horse and carriage couldn't get on through stairs. So it used to kind of slope all the way down. 
and now the ice is melting off. So this area is under surveillance, look at that. So it is a protected little area. Now in the 1900s, especially towards the 70s, 80s and 90s, this fell into disrepair. A lot of the original ornaments of the houses and the architectural details were changed and they were in mismatched color. But then they were beautifully restored uh, from the 90s onward quickly becoming one of the most sought after addresses in New York City. Hey Nobu, hello Manny. Houses, they remind me of London Mew houses. Yeah, yeah, they remind me of Mews. Uh, though these were not built for Mews, I assume they use the same type of architectural styling. Also has the same type of kind of look as you would see in most London neighborhoods. So this was featured in Boardwalk Empire in the first season. Uh, it was like the house of one of the main characters. And here's number 16, Sylvan Terrace. This is the one that recently went a few years ago for $1.6 million. And I actually have the four floor plan of 16 Sylvan Terrace. So that's the floor plan. It's actually very modest. It has a parlor, a living and dining, a bedroom, two bedrooms. We have a bathroom in one of the bedrooms. And the office and convertible third bedroom. Whoa, pretty big. And there's a storage unit also. So here we have three floors right there. And they have an outdoor space in the back, which seems absolutely wonderful. So would you buy this for $1.6 million, a three-story apartment here with a tiny little backyard <laughs> and up to three uh, bedrooms? Just let me know. And here we have a normal sized door. So this is, also, uh, this is also a great selfie spot. I've seen a lot of Instagrammers actually take their photos here. No lift. I don't think so. I don't think they have a lift. And they are landmarks, so I'm not entirely sure if you can even add a lift if you were to buy this. Claire says, uh, probably not. Eugen says, oh, 1.6 million. Yeah, 1.6 million. 1.6 million. Not 6 million. No, no. That'd be crazy. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Lolly, you say it's too much. Is the street original? Yes, the street is original. Uh, we have a lot of ice on top of it, but these are original Belgian blocks. These Belgian blocks, some of them, or at least a good portion of them, are dating back all the way to the 1760s when the Morris Jumel mansion was constructed. Now, we are also on top of one of the highest places in all of New York City. So before there would be apartment buildings over here. So for example, if you can go to the top of that apartment building, which I wish we could, we could see clearly the views of downtown Manhattan, clearly. Trisha, you say for, for, for New York City, this is a bargain. The street has a lot of character, I agree. So Sylvan Terrace. So stay tuned, we're gonna go here at 1 p.m. next video. We're gonna take an inside tour with the museum. Morris Jamel Mansion, oldest mansion in all of Manhattan, dating back to 1760s. Stay tuned. But before we do, I want to show you a little bit more of the area so you get to know what area we're in once we go inside. It's quiet over here, yeah, yeah, it is. Ooh, Canadian gal from Nova Scotia, welcome. Hello, Gree from dear New York, nice to see you here. So this area is known as the Morris Jamel Mansion Historic District. And the mansion is haunted, yes! I will ask about that. I can't give you any guarantees if they'll tell us about the haunted history. 
Uh, though, watch my previous videos and I will link it to it afterwards so I can show you the haunted history. Yes, a brownstone in the Upper West Side costs $10 million, says Trisha. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things are getting expensive here in New York City, even though it's a pandemic. And here we have some more Belgian blocks. People might call them cobblestones, but they're Belgian blocks since they're formed into a square. Cobblestones are mismatched pieces of rock. And here we have more historic architecture. So there we see a brown sign. That's how you're able to tell a historic district here in New York City when you have a brown sign. Hello, Lenny from Midtown. Hello, Tracy from Miami. Mandy, you love the streets. Yes, good morning, Chris. Nice to see you here. Hello, Lolly Mop. Lenny says, hidden gem. Rona says, if you can design the city, do you prefer old architecture or modern uh, design buildings? Ronald, great question. Great question. So, designing a city from scratch is nothing new. There have been many cities where large chunks have been designed in mass from scratch, meaning they've generally had empty land or land that they can easily develop, maybe forest, meadows, whatever, swamp, uh, and then they would just purposely built streets entire grid system, uh, new buildings and apartments. That is nothing new. The thing is, older urban planning pre the car was built on a human scale. Like these little, this little historic area is on the human scale. So you can easily walk to the nearby grocery store or the nearby coffee shop or, or if you were here in the 1800s, the nearby market. But once the car came out in mass in the 1900s, specifically after the World War II in the 1950s, uh, cities were starting to be built and things stopped being walkable. And that's why people, when they say old architecture, they associate it with human scale architecture, human scale urban planning. And that said, I would design a city, if it were from scratch, to be human scale, though it is nice to have older architecture. Older architecture definitely has some magic to it, uh, especially you can, you can definitely revive a lot of these architectural styles and make them new if you wanted to. Because even these styles we see over here are Greek revival or Italianate revival architecture. Hey Tracy, thank you so much for the 100 stars, and you, Jen, thank you so much for the 50 stars. So here we have a sign. And it says, this district includes the rows of wooden houses on Sylvan Terrace, the brick Queen Anne style houses. So yeah, these are Queen Anne style. And as I mentioned, they're Romanesque revival, uh, a little bit further down the street, with some rough brownstone basements and first floors and smooth ashlar above. The finest building of the district is the Morris Jumel Mansion, built in 1765 and used as the headquarters for George Washington. You'll learn a little bit more about that. Amanda has a great comment. Uh, I, I, I see a few people like Gwen uh, agree with me about human scale, but Amanda actually has a great comment. Uh, she says, a lot of people don't want human scale, they want a yard. They're not mutually exclusive. So you don't need to build a car scaled city in order to have a yard. Uh, even if you go to Brooklyn or Uptown Manhattan or anywhere in generally many parts of Manhattan, even the West Village, these townhouses do have yards. They do have yards. And they have yards sometimes as big as the ones you encounter in the suburbs. But then again, if you want a gigantic, massive yard, do you need one? That's the question. Do most city dwellers actually want a gigantic, massive yard if they're able to walk around to the nearest park or they're able to hang out with friends at the nearest bar or whatnot? Um, necessary to have a massive yard. Think about that.
So let me end with showing you the views of the uh, Harlem from here and uh, the rest of Manhattan. Do you find brownstones all around New York, uh, US? I think it's mostly New York City. Um, Boston has similar architecture. I think Philadelphia as well. And you might find some brownstone architecture, I think also in Chicago. And of course, New Jersey as well. So I don't know where else in the US. I haven't traveled extensively throughout the US. So anyone let me know. Susie says, never cared about a yard myself. Yes. And Gwen says, you have incredible outdoor spaces. Yes. So me, uh, having a car and a, actually having a car scaled city and a yard are not mutually exclusive because you can have more parks in a human scaled city. You can have more green areas. It doesn't even have to be a full park like Central Park. It could be a green area like this, which I'm going to show you right now before we go over here. So I got just a little bit of time left right here. You can also take the M2 bus to the East Village. So if you want kind of a more casual bus ride, you can take it all the way from uptown Manhattan all the way downtown. Gwen says uh, pocket parks and the other one says uh, I like a yard so you can let pets out right right and as I mentioned a lot of these houses do have yards so here we can see views of the wrongs in the distance and the other neighborhoods of Manhattan Still lots of snow on the ground, oh yeah. And here we have some Manhattan schist sticking out. Some older light poles as well. Hello Kenya, so happy you're enjoying Kenya. And Just Kate says, having a, a garden normally increases the house prices in Europe. And hello Alexandra, hello Gary, thank you so much, hello Kay. Thank you so much for letting me know who sent stars. And there we go. So that was a little tour of the Morris Jamel Historic District with Sylvan Terrace. Highly recommend coming here. 163rd Street on the C train is the nearest train. You can also take the bus, the M2 bus from East Village. Have a nice ride uptown, downtown. Actually sounds very nice. Might do that someday. And stay tuned. We're going to go inside the oldest surviving mansion in all of Manhattan. The Morris Jamel Mansion dating back to 1765. And it ties into Aaron Burr. Yes, Aaron Burr from the Hamilton musical. And yes, it also ties into Lin-Manuel Miranda because he used this mansion in order to write a special song. Thank you everyone so much for watching. The discussion of cities can get a lot more complicated, but I'm a champion for human scale cities. And I hope showing you these places convinces you that it is possible. So see you soon at 1 p.m. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.